Hello, glad you could make it. It's time, oh, no watch still, it's time for another Murdoch Music Minute. It's a Saturday morning, I'm still a bit uh, tired, there's snow outside and uh, I thought this is maybe something for the people who like lists and rankings. I'm not gonna talk about my favorite winter tunes or Christmas songs but rather I came up with a list of music to uh, wake me up a little bit more. Today I'm going to talk about garage rock slash psych rock tracks. Now garage rock is a bit of a strange genre or maybe subgenre of rock. Um, the great the, the the major time of garage rock, I would argue, were uh, the mid '60s to late '60s, uh, the time of 1964 up to 1966, '67. Uh, there was also some great garage rock later on, and of course a garage rock revival even in the early 2000s. But um, classic garage rock is something uh, that happened in the '60s. And that's what I uh, will take a look at today. Now, what exactly is garage rock? I won't give you the answer in this video. Garage rock usually refers to a very um, primitive, simplistic style of rock music. Still, of course, deeply rooted in the blues and R&B, but also very much influenced by the beat music of the British Invasion. Um, but there are also uh, bands classified as garage rock that sound a little bit more um, psychedelic, obviously, uh, and other bands that more sort of moved into an R&B soul style but also played uh, with a rather simplistic, brute approach. But on the whole, garage rock these days usually is seen as the forerunner to punk rock. Sometimes it's also called 60s punk or proto-punk. I've come up with a list of 20 garage rock tracks, or tracks I would consider garage rock, uh, that are my favorites. Uh, from this genre and you will find a lot of rather obscure bands in this list. Maybe this is also another feature of garage rock. We are usually talking about little to completely unknown bands that maybe just recorded one album or even just a handful of singles. A lot of the classic garage rock bands are from the USA but I will also talk about a few British bands and then there is even one French guy in my list. Arguably uh, there was also a successful garage rock in the 60s um, and some acts that are had maybe even a stronger pop leaning could be uh, considered um, garage rock as well or at least have a few tracks in their repertoire that clearly belong to the category of garage rock. Um, I'm, for instance, thinking of bands like The Trox, uh, but even uh, acts like Dave D, Dozy, Beaky, Mick and Titch um, could be considered garage rock at times. And of course, early material by The Kinks and The Who. Most garage rock is simple music, usually just played with three or four chords, very simple repetitive chord progressions but this music even though it may seem almost dilettant at times is i think a very important part of 60s rock and an important milestone in the development of as i've said punk rock and also underground rock alternative styles um, very often as we will see uh, the garage rock bands also had a darker image or tried to add a bit of grit to the usual surf rock and beat music of their times. If you are, well, not exactly a prisoner, but a fan of the more obscure parts of 60s pop culture and musical history, 
stay tuned as I will go through my list of 20 favorite garage and psych rock tracks from the 60s. A lot of the obscure garage rock one single only acts were sort of resurrected and rediscovered um, by the release of a box set, I think in the 70s, um, a very famous box set called Nuggets. There are various parts of this box set now available. The first one had, I think, four volumes and concentrated on American garage rock, and there's a second one um, with British acts. And quite a number of uh, entries on my top 20 list can be found on uh, the Nuggets collection. But don't worry if you know the Nuggets collection. This will not simply be um, Murdoch's favorite tracks from the Nuggets collection. I also tried and um, put in um, some songs that at least I think are not on this collection. For some artists, I really had to do a bit of a deep dive, a bit of internet research, because usually with these um, short-lived bands, there is not a lot of biographical information available. Um, Wikipedia doesn't know everything and that makes it actually also more interesting and um, I really thank some internet sources to find out about uh, at least basic information about some of the bands I put in my top 20 list. GarageHangover.com or Psychedelicized.com are quite helpful if you are interested in finding out more about the biography and the history of uh, those acts. How so, let's get started. This is the old radio I've got in my kitchen. So let's find out what we can tune in here. quickly before we really get into the list. If you want to uh, listen to those tracks, find out a little bit more about um, the songs I talk about, I've made a Spotify playlist, Murdoch's fave garage rock tracks or 60s garage rock tracks and um, I'll leave the link down below in the video description if you want to check out the songs I'm talking about. Um, I had to replace uh, two tracks that were not available on Spotify, so let that be a lesson to myself and to you. Uh, streaming platforms don't have everything and are not always the best if you are looking for specific genres or more obscure stuff. Still, check out the playlist if you like, and now let's get into the list, finally. <laughs> My number 20 is a band called Rob London and the Rogues from San Antonio. They started as Bobby Jenkins and the Jades in 1964 and changed their name around 1965 to Rob London and the Rogues. Recorded just a couple of singles, I think three or four singles, none of which left an impression outside uh, their uh, regional area, the San Antonio area. And the track that I picked is the very up-tempo, nice, groovy, Who Will Be The One. Who will be the one to hold your hand? Who will be the one to be your brand new man? Who will be the one? Number 19, maybe the most famous track in my list and the one that arguably laid the foundation for the whole garage rock thing, the Kingsman's version of Louie Louie or Louie Louie. This is a song that has been covered by 
um, a lot of acts, even the Beach Boys uh, have their own version of Louis Louis, but nothing can touch uh, the simplistic brilliance of the Kingsman. The Kingsman hailed from Portland, Oregon, and were a bunch of school kids, still very, very young, when they started to play in little clubs, dance cafes. They played jukebox hits and were a sort of party band that covered popular songs of the times to get their peers dancing. Um, but they were discovered and um, not only recorded a couple of singles, but actually are uh, maybe one of the more prolific bands in my list because they uh, indeed released a couple of albums throughout their career. And apart from Louis Louis, uh, which reached number two in the USA, um, also had a few other hit singles that are more or less forgotten nowadays. Uh, the lineup of the Kingsmen changed drastically over the years. There were also some internal quarrels about uh, who owned the name of the Kingsman. Um, the singer uh, you can hear on Louis Louis, the guitarist of the Kingsman, left the group shortly after this recording because he fell out with other band members. Um, and uh, famously, uh, this take is filled with mistakes. At one point, the singer starts too early with, I think, the third verse. Uh, he starts singing the first words and then uh, breaks off again and waits for the band to catch up. But all this has become really iconic and I'm pretty sure that you've heard this song before. My number 19, The Kingsman with Louis Luai. another of the more famous garage rock bands, the Blues Magoos. The Blues Magoos from New York City's Bronx are a good example of the difficult question where does garage rock end and psychedelic rock begin? Their sound clearly is already very trippy, very psychedelic, but then again also has this um, proto-punk aggressiveness and rawness of classic garage rock. The first album was called Psychedelic Lollipop and it also features the song that I have chosen, uh, one of the uh, most famous singles, We Ain't Got Nothing Yet. I think it reached number five in the US Billboard charts. They uh, released two uh, further albums after this one and also had a couple of more or less successful singles and then split up, I think, in the late 60s. There was a Blues Magoos revival uh, in I think the mid 90s or early 2000s. Um, so some of these bands really gained critical acclaim or a cult following among fans of this genre later on in history. We Ain't Got Nothing Yet uh, is a wonderful example of psychedelic garage rock. It's very catchy. It has um, a simple tuneful chorus that you can hum or yell along to and it features uh, another prominent instrument of typical garage rock next to the raw electric guitar it is the almost poisonous sounding farfisa organ <laughs> This next band is the complete opposite, a rather unknown, not very successful, short-lived band from Albion, New York, called The Humans. Again, they were a group of high school friends. They all played in the same high school marching band, started out as a party band, played covers, and only released one uh, single, 
the A side was called Take a Taxi and it's a bit more folk rock inspired but what gained my attention and the attention of garage rock fans is the B side to this single and that is called Warning. Well, I'm giving you the warning. Yeah, I'm giving you the warning. You better listen to me. You gotta listen to me. I got something to say. Girl. I got something to say. Girl. I'm not playing games with you. I'm not playing with you. Cause I'm giving you the warning. This next band uh, was never happy with their band name. Uh, they changed it several times since they founded in 1965. Then their record company threw some ideas for new, apparently more catchy band names at them, but they rejected that. And at one point um, they ended up as Gandalf. Originally the idea had been to call themselves Gandalf and the Wizards, uh, which was then shortened to only Gandalf. And this band released only one album uh, during their career, 1967's uh, Gandalf album. It was filled with folk rock turned into psychedelic rock cover versions, uh, only featured two or three originals written by the band's guitarist uh, Pete Sando. And uh, the entry on my list is one of those few originals. It's a song called Can You Travel in the Dark Alone? A slightly melancholic, slightly ominous, uh, spooky, garagey, psychedelic rock track. Um, the Gandalf album uh, performed poorly back in the 60s. Um, the label didn't really promote this album, fell out with the band. Um, and later on, uh, this album was rediscovered and uh, nowadays is one of those holy grails uh, among psych heads. And original uh, versions of this album are almost impossible to pay apparently on the market. Maybe uh, check out this album, it's quite good. And this song is one I really like. Gandalf, Can You Travel in the Dark Alone? <laughs> Shines on me and there's your home But don't you ever wonder Could you travel in the dark alone? For the 15th place Let's for a change stay on my side of the pond and look at France. Maybe not the country you would automatically associate with garage rock, but there is one artist that should not be missing on this list, in my opinion. And I'm talking about a guy called Jacques Dutronc. He's still around. He's one of the most uh, famous and popular uh, performers in the French speaking world according to the internet, um, playboy, musician, but also actor in the 70s and 80s. Um, yes, released a whole bunch of albums and especially in the 60s, uh, his music was um, very, very influential for garage rock beat music uh, in France. Um, they had their own scene there, which was called Ye Ye, which was a sort of uh, British influenced pop music but sung in French and uh, Jacques Dutton really uh, is for me the king of cool when it comes to groovy 60s music. Um, the track I've chosen for my list is called Le Responsable, um, one of his most famous singles. It's from 1969 and um, yeah translation would be the one who's responsible or the one feeling responsible. Um, even if you don't speak French, uh, check out some Jacques Dutronc. Now 
now we get to a band from Great Britain, England, Dantalian's Chariot. Um, the band name came from occultist writings, apparently, and the band was formed by a guy called Zood Money, who had started out as more a kind of jazz soul keyboard player, uh, but then decided he wanted to uh, do something more psychedelic and formed this band. There are also other members in this band who went on to become very, very famous. Um, the band only released one album um, and one single called Madman Running Through the Fields uh, with clear allusions to uh, hallucinogenics and the effects of drug intake. Uh, the single was not successful, the label wasn't very happy with the concept and the album apparently and the band uh, already broke up again in 1968 and various members uh, went to other bands. Zoot Money uh, for a while joined Eric Burden and The Animals and the very young guitarist Andy Summers went on to play with the jazz rockers Soft Machine and then had a worldwide career later on of course with The Police. But in my list we stick to Dantalian's Chariot and their quite charming psychedelic single Madman Running Through the Fields. rock apparently also happened in Canada and that's where my next band is from. A band I really had to look for uh, for quite a while because uh, the track that is featured in my list here uh, was given to me on a self-made compilation CD from a very good friend um, I also played in a band with but uh, he gave the wrong band name and I had to find out uh, who the real band was. I'm talking about a band called Plague or The Plague from Canada, a quintet from the mid 60s. Again, they only um, recorded a couple of singles and the one that made my list is called Face of Time, an original written by the band members. Um, and they felt they had a hit on their hands, but Shortly after they had released the single, uh, the record company went bankrupt and this one never really made it big. Um, it's, I think, a fantastic garage slash early psych rock track that you uh, should seek out if you like this kind of music. Number 13, The Plague and Face of Time from 1966. Days go fast, but much too fast. I live my happiest hours, but as the days go few, that love go fast. These are my saddest oh, hours. Yeah. Okay, we're flying. Over the pond again, Brooklyn, USA, the year is 1967 and there is a young band that is very unhappy that their band name has been misspelled on the label for their first and, as it should turn out, only single. The first crew to the moon became the first crow to the moon, which I think is actually a very cool band name. Um, gives you images in your head, first crow to the moon. Um, again, something that is in between garage rock and psychedelic rock. Lots of cool psychedelic organ on this track. Uh, it was the only single released by this band. Again, the single did not chart and later on became a much sought after item among uh, psychedelic rock fans. Uh, it also has a truly psychedelic title. 
the sun lights up the shadows of your mind. Another rather sad reason this band broke up only after one single was that um, their singer and guitarist, I think, um, shortly afterwards died of an illness, very sad ending, but at least they left us with this true nugget of psychedelic garage rock. Every time you turn away, you have to lose the ball. Sun lights up, the shadows of your mind. Sun lights up, the shadows of your mind. The music that you hear. Number 11. A band called Gregory D. and the Avantis from Minneapolis. I think an Avanti was a kind of car, but I might be mistaken. Maybe you can inform me in the comments. Another of those bands uh, that started out as a high school band of friends. They played, you know, high school ballrooms, uh, clubs, and then recorded several singles, started with cover versions, later on recorded uh, their own material and also changed the band name over time. They, according to internet sources, they started out already in 1961, but um, their recording career was between 1963 and 1966. Um, the track I've chosen is one of their uh, last singles. It's an original um, called Because of You, released in 1965. I think this one was only uh, regionally um, a minor hit, they never made it big, but Because of You is not only a fun track, but a good example of uh, unhinged garage rock. I buy you ring and those Cadillac car. Welcome back to the top 10 of Murdoch's favorite psych slash garage rock track from the 60s. Um, at number 10, a band from Boston, Massachusetts, which is also the area where they had quite a bit of success, but never outside the New England area. Um, the band is called The Remains, and they had a couple of, I think, tremendously good singles. Um, the one that I've chosen, my number 10, is called Don't Look Back. It was the last single before they broke up, released in 1966. Uh, the band, however, also, like a few others I've already mentioned, had a reunion uh, around the 1990s. So that's very cool. Um, the sound of the remains, I think, sounds still pretty fresh today and uh, to my ears, they are one of those garage rock bands that uh, also paved the way for a genre I haven't mentioned so far, namely that of power pop. Maybe you can see what I mean um, from the small snippet now. Number 10, The Remains, Don't Look Back. You both made your bed and now you're gonna have to sleep there. Old man blue is going to try to find you everywhere. Don't look back. Well, you better not look Don't now. Look back. Or he'll catch you. Don't look back. You gotta keep running. Running till the end of time. Now another band from England. Steamhammer formed in 1968 and this is maybe um, a bit of a questionable entry on my list because Steamhammer um, could rather be considered a blues rock band that um, started playing in a time when blues rock morphed into heavy rock and hard rock and uh, that's what you get on Steamhammer records most of the time but still to me there's also some garagey quality, at least to um, 
to the material on their debut album. Steamhammer actually look back on a longer career, a longer career than most of the obscure garage bands I've mentioned. Um, they broke up at some point in the 70s and have reformed, that's quite interesting, in 2020 and uh, released a kind of uh, reunion album in the 2020s. Uh, that's quite remarkable. I haven't listened to it. Uh, my choice, however, is the first Steam Hammer single from 1968, Junior's Wailing. Quite bluesy, but still a uh, powerful garage rock backbone to it and extraordinary guitar work. <laughs> A band from New Jersey uh, named after a nightclub or a venue, a popular venue from their area called The Balloon Farm. Now with this band name you can easily guess that we are more on the psychedelic side of things again. Um, the Balloon Farm released a single called Question of Temperature which reached uh, at least uh, the top 40, Billboard's top 40. However, the next single flopped and the label quickly dropped them again and shortly afterwards, um, in late 67, early 68, um, they split up. Um, they are best known for A Question of Temperature, which was the first single released in 1967. Um, this is a classic among psychedelic rock fans and also a song that I think is um, pretty pretty good. My number eight, the balloon farm. Is it a question of love? <laughs> is it a state of mind? No, 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 no. It's a question of. It's a question of. It's a question of. It's a question of. Of temperature. Yeah. Number seven, an English band that was um, the starting point for uh, one musician who would go on to become a central figure of progressive rock. I'm talking about a very young Steve Howe, who played with a band called Tomorrow before he later joined Yes. Also, Tomorrow uh, featured the drummer Twink, who uh, later on had his own band, The Pink Fairies, and also for a short while um, was the notorious uh, drummer of The Pretty Things, a band that I like a lot, and apparently he was renowned for his very wild uh, stage persona. But before all that, uh, they played together in a band called Tomorrow. Um, Tomorrow also just released one album, I think released in 1967 or 68. Um, they were actually critically quite acclaimed. Uh, John Peel also was a big fan of them. Uh, before later on he discovered punk and post-punk. He had a radio show where he uh, promoted um, uh, the more experimental uh, psychedelic music uh, in the late 60s. But for some reason, neither the album nor the single Tomorrow re released were a success. Quite a surprise to me, actually. Uh, the album is quite solid. Um, another uh, revered release among psychedelic rock fans. I think it's a good album, worthwhile checking out, but not, you know, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, however, uh, what they are best known for and deservedly known for is the single taken from this album, a song called My White Bicycle, later on covered by Nazareth uh, in a more hard rock style. Tomorrow's version is pure 1967 psychedelic rock, um, so that's why I, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised 
uh, this didn't make anything uh, in the charts, not even the UK charts. Uh, I think it's it's a great track for 1967, and uh, it's also in my list here. Tomorrow, my white bicycle. Number six, let's stay in the year 1967, but from all the psychedelic sound effects and allusions to uh, riding your bicycle when taking LSD, um, let's get back to more down-to-earth dance music of the 60s, this time provided by a band called The Human Beans, uh, funny spelling here, uh, a group from Ohio, also they only released one album uh, that I think was more kind of contractual obligation at that point. Um, they uh, released a single, Nobody But Me, which was a cover version that barely cracked the top 40, but was quite a hit in Japan. Uh, the second single was an absolute flop in the USA. Again, the label lost interest. Um, they more or less half-heartedly uh, released that album afterwards and then split up. Nobody But Me, however, uh, has become a bit of an underground hit. It has been used for film soundtracks, uh, for television commercials, and is also known um, for, I think, breaking a record of uh, using a word uh, repetitively. In this case, the word no. It's a wonderful garage rock dance track that, uh, you know, grabs you immediately by the hips if you like dancing in a 60s style um, and one that obviously I like a lot. It's my number six, The Human Beings, Nobody But Me, released in 1967. to the top five and at number five uh, I've put a band that really is different from anything else that was around in the 60s uh, in terms of radicalness um, they can maybe be uh, compared to the Velvet Underground or the Stooges but they were a little bit earlier than the Velvet Underground it's an American band but we have to go to Germany um, to find them because um, the members of this group all were GIs stationed in Germany where they formed um, yeah to have some fun play some garage rock uh, some rock and roll tunes uh, but soon they discovered they wanted to do something a bit different maybe go in an artsier direction and uh, be a bit more provocative. This was also, I think, a bit of an idea of their agent or their management that they found. And the band called themselves The Monks, uh, or simply Monks, um, and accordingly also appeared on stage dressed up as monks, even with uh, shaved hair. Their uh, style of garage rock really uh, is very minimalist, very raw. Uh, the press back then said that the monks were completely devoid of any melody. Listening to it now, this was some really uh, cool shit. Um, definitely a very important influence on alternative rock, indie rock, and most of all, punk rock. Uh, I don't know if Iggy Pop listened or ever heard The Monks in the late 60s, but um, if you are interested in this kind of music, this proto-punk movement and everything that led to classic punk, 
The Monks and their only album, Black Monk Time, are essential listening. I chose a track that was, uh, I think, not released as a single, it's an album track. Just an incredible little piece of nasty garage rock. The Monks with Oh How To Do Now. Monks with their primitive robotic garage rock featuring even a banjo are nowadays considered a cult band. Um, they reunited in the 90s, I think, also in the early 2000s there was a kind of uh, appreciation wave for the Monks. Um, by now I'm afraid almost all or, or, or actually all the members of the Monks um, are no longer with us but I think they at least gained some late recognition when they were still around. And yeah, check out Black Monk Time. From this rather uh, dark version of 60s music, let's go back to something more tuneful. Todd Rundgren, not as a solo artist, but with his uh, first famous band, the Ness, or just Ness, they hailed from Philadelphia, um, released two proper albums and a third one that was more or less, I think, released when they had already broken up. Um, another band with a sort of cult following never really, uh, you know, reached the Premier League of 60s bands, but I think they released a ton of uh, fantastic tunes. And one of the best ones is their debut single, Open My Eyes. Uh, this is, again is garage rock that has a bit of psychedelic elements and clearly, uh, as I would argue, inspired power pop. Very melodious but energetic stuff. The Ness and Open My Eyes from, again, I think 1967 and why this didn't even make the top 100 in the USA also is a mystery for me. Uh, this is just a great tune. <laughs> This list of actually commercial flops that sound brilliant to my ears. At number three we have another band that should go on to become actually quite famous. Uh, the Gollywogs. If you have no idea who that could be, uh, just wait for a few years and find out about them under a different name, namely Credence Clearwater Revival. Formed in the early 60s in California, the Gollywogs uh, were John Fogerty's uh, first band. Um, actually, all the band mem members of CCR started out as the Gollywogs and um, they released a couple of singles. First, rather rock and roll inspired, and by the mid 60s, 65, 66, they tried to uh, sound more like the British invasion groups uh, and played their very own style of. Um, light on the ears garage rock. None of those singles ever had any success. The one that I chose is nowadays their most famous song, um, a splendid slice of garage rock, a song called Fight Fire, released as a single in 1966. I believe this is an original, um, not a cover version, and flew completely under the radar only was discovered later on when there was um, great interest in CCR and the recordings they did before they had become CCR. Um, 
And it's easy to see why this is um, a hit among Garage Rock fans. The Gollywogs fight fire. Number two is another of those unsung heroes from the 60s, another band that has a couple of great songs in their um, scattered discography, but um, never uh, became as successful as they should have been. Um, I'm talking about a band from England, Hertfordshire, called The Creation. Um, they started out in, I think, 64 or 63, also first under a different name, changed the name to The Creation in 1966, and uh, were in the beginning produced by the ever-present Shel Talmy, um, who also had produced, I think, early singles by The Who and uh, The Kinks. And it's not surprising that the style of The Creation also very much is in the vein of this uh, heavier mod rock of the mid 60s. Um, they can be played easily alongside uh, the 60s singles by The Who and The Kinks. And I've chosen or one of my favorite tracks by them, actually is also one of, of their most uh, famous ones, um, a song called Making Time, their debut single, I think, and also um, the first song in recorded history to feature an electric guitar played with a violin bow. Um, this was not something that Jimmy Page invented. It is um, on record, apparently, that the creation were the first ones to use this technique. And in this track, um, this creates a menacing, very biting, aggressive sound um, in an already quite aggressive garage rock track that, however, like, is often the case with, I think, UK bands, never completely abandons tune. So I think this um, is a great combination of raw energy and still a very nice tune. The creation making time. And if you like this one, um, check out uh, anything you can get by the creation. There is actually a very good compilation uh, out there combining all the singles and b-sides uh, they released during the 60s. The creation then uh, broke up in the in the late 60s due to lack of success, unfortunately. But there have been uh, several reunions and also reunion albums. But of course, uh, the most essential stuff is uh, the material they released in the 60s. First of all, making time. Looking for an open door Never take a chance Take your pick And at number one How could you compile a garage rock band without mentioning this group? For me they are number one here From Tacoma, Washington the Sonics, uh, probably also one of the oldest bands on this list, uh, formed already around 1960. Again, a couple of school friends, teenagers, who started out by playing instrumental rock and roll covers, surf music. Uh, but the Sonics, I don't know what was in the air in Tacoma, uh, early on played with much more energy and aggressiveness than all the other local bands. Um, they had local hits with their first singles, but American Radio was really reluctant to play this. Um, the first single was called The Witch, and it has a claustrophobic energy, and um, allegedly radio stations really refused to play this. So there was early on, there was a ban on those records that were deemed too wild and, um, you know, too dangerous for uh, public order, actually. So what did the band do? They uh, released a second single called 
psycho. I don't think that made things really better. Um, the Sonics were sort of, um, you know, secret tip among garage rock fans. Um, they recorded two really great albums. Here are the Sonics from 1965. And if you listen to this, uh, th that actually sounds like uh, punk rock from the 70s, but with um, a rock and roll saxophone added. And the album Boom followed, I think, in 1966. Um, then they split up. Uh, there were a few compilations recorded and um, the Sonics reunited as well, I think, in the late 90s. I saw the Sonics live uh, in the 2010s. Um, with still a couple of original members doing a world tour throughout small to mid-size venues. Uh, they also played Austria and that was um, a remarkable, incredible concert actually. Um, you know, you had these guys, some of them passed their 70s on stage uh, playing this raw punk rock and roll stuff. Incredible energy still to this day. Uh, check out the Sonics. The track that I've chosen uh, actually was never a single, at least not originally in the 60s, I think, uh, but has become one of their most uh, beloved tracks. Uh, Have Love Will Travel. It's maybe not as freaked out as songs like uh, The Witch, Psycho or Strychnine. Uh, but it is my favorite track by the Sonics and also this one has got the shouting vocals and the raw power that is special for the Sonics and it must have directly gone over to artists like um, Iggy Pop or the MC5. Number one, the Sonics have love will travel. Wow! Have a love Oh baby, we'll travel Oh uh -huh. have a love Oh baby, we'll travel I said if you need a love in then I'm, I'll travel Thanks for sticking around. I hope this list was fun for you or maybe there were some uh, things to discover for you. Check out the playlist as mentioned. Uh, you'll find the link in the description. Let me know what you think of Garage Rock or what your favorite Garage Rock or obscure, heavy, psychedelic rock tracks are. Uh, and maybe you now feel like forming your own Garage Rock band. It should be simple, dirty and quick and loud. That's the most important thing. Thanks for watching and uh, look out for the next Murdoch Music Minute.